if you have 10 minutes coffee break and yeah and quicker uh, before we start may i ask how many of you use latex okay that's good um, how many of you know Overleaf or have used Overleaf before? Okay, that's a good start. Okay, let's um, start with um, this nice um, visual. In the press, uh, now you can work with researchers in different places very easily. So this is a visual overview of the collaboration networks between researchers in different cities. That trend has also been reflected in uh, different studies uh, conducted by organizations like, for example, the Royal Society, which we can look at uh, at this slide. Uh, the first slide on the left-hand side shows um, how papers with more than one author tend to increase. Uh, on the right-hand side, we see that this collaboration that is increasing is beneficial. That means, uh, in this slide at least, um, that Papers who have more than one author tend to receive more citations and they tend to be more widely um, shared. As most of you probably know, um, collaboration can be a pain and it can be frustrating. Uh, there's a lot of uh, processes that are very time consuming. Uh, the challenge is that uh, authors usually face uh, multiple versions of the same document long email chains, not to mention the difficulties for formatting and typesetting, also maintaining the references. So we end up with long revision cycles. Uh, and as we can see at this comic here, uh, the author uh, is facing those uh, same challenges, even within the same department. He doesn't look very um, happy at the last uh, picture. He's reads, I think, revision number 22, so he's not having a very good time. So it's not just the collaboration between the authors that's been affected, it's also collaboration between other contributors in the process. So for example, uh, we say we have the author, the editor, the copy editor, the publisher, the reviewers, we call the publisher, the reviewers, and then the readers. So it could be, for example, a thesis that you are um, writing, so it needs to be written, but then it needs to be reviewed, and then it needs to be uh, published, and then it needs to be distributed to the different readers. So the document goes through a different uh, stages in this whole process, um, and making its life uh, complicated and confusing. It looks a bit messy, this graph anyway, so we can get uh, the message. But um, with the cloud, now we are able to, to change that. So uh, we're given the chance to put the document in the center. So the different uh, contributors, like authors, reviewers, publishers, and readers, they can all contribute at the same time, they can access the document uh, from different places, and they can all contribute uh, their part in the, in the process. So this is what Overleaf is doing. Uh, Overleaf is a real-time LaTeX collaborative authoring platform. It makes the process of uh, writing and publishing the document um, easier uh, for researchers and teachers and students. Um, so you can simply write on the left, and then you can see your typeset version on the right-hand side. Uh, we'll, uh, we're planning to have a demo after my bit. So if everything works OK, we'll, we'll be able to see how it works. Uh, a little background on Overleaf. Overleaf was created by John Hammersley and John Lee Miller. They're both mathematicians. Um, Overleaf was a response in, um, to the frustrations they were facing while they were doing the research. Um, so that's how it was born uh, four years ago. It now has 7 million documents and 600,000 uh, authors across 180 um, countries. I just wanted to mention here that this growth um, is completely organic. It's from scientists that started using Overleaf and then shared it with other colleagues and then the colleagues with other colleagues and then so on and so forth. So uh, it has grown remarkably and it continues to grow. So what is Overleaf doing for the end users? Um, the aim is to facilitate collaboration, to make the whole process easier and uh, quicker, to make research faster, more open, more accessible. So by using this tool, we have one version of the document, as we saw before, accessible by all. There's no need to email large files. We simply share a link or invite your colleague to work on your project. The typesetting is done automatically in the background. 
uh, there's automat uh, automatic references style and citation link. Uh, you can also, while you work real time, you can have um, you can add comments and uh, and share and track changes, and you have full version control. There's no need to install any local software in different machines. And of course, Overleaf will provide you with a tech support uh, on the platform, on the templates, LaTeX itself, etc. Um, institutional benefits of pro accounts. Um, Overleaf comes um, in a free version, it comes in pro and it comes in pro plus. So we will look at the pro accounts as we have, um, we see this is uh, the better for institutional accounts. We actually have accounts here at Cambridge. I'll show you in a little bit later. So um, versus the free account, uh, you get more space. You have uh, 10 giga stores and 500 files per project. Uh, very important advantage uh, and benefit. You can protect your project. That means you, you can invite your colleagues privately by email instead of sharing a link. You have full project history and version control, so you can see at any point uh, who's worked on your project, what changes have they made, and uh, when, and the name, so you, ha you are uh, fully uh, informed of what's going on on the project. You can have a quick save to Dropbox and priority support. So as I said, um, Overleaf is now trialed at Cambridge University. This is a trial that we set up with the Department of Engineering. This is the customized portal that we have for the University of Cambridge. So users can go in, they can claim their account, and they can sign in. At the same time on that uh, same portal, you can uh, access resources, you can access templates and guides, how to get started. This is an example of a template that was uploaded um, uh, by, the by the Department of Engineering. I think I can see that. Yeah, it's the Department of Engineering. So you can just go to the portal, click on the thesis, and start writing using it as a template. Uh, the trial started in September, at which point we had four, just over 400 users. At that point, they were all upgraded to pro accounts. So you can see um, the difference in the graph. So previously, they were all free. Now with the trial, now they're all uh, pro. Um, it has been a fantastic uptake, um, and we now have uh, just over 1,000 users. Uh, we are monitoring the data, we're following up um, how users uh, are using Overly, and uh, towards the end, of that's going to be next September, we're going to continue the discussions and, and ho hopefully uh, set up uh, a, a, a normal uh, partnership. So this is uh, the landing page. This is the homepage of Overleaf. You can start writing, creating a new paper. I think I can now pass it to you for the live demo. Yeah. I'll just hold it. I think it might be easier. Um, it's also going to be a bit awkward with me sitting here, but here we go. Um, okay. Not overleaf. Um, so, um, if we just, as I said, you just click here to uh, create a new paper. And as it loads up, so this is our uh, sort of demo, um, uh, sort of test um, project that you, you automatically create. Um, and it comes with just some examples of how to get started. But um, as you can see, if I, if I start saying, Edit the abstract. Let's see if I can put this mic somewhere. That... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me just say hello, Cambridge. Um, and then it should, once this uh, blue bar, so it's now got off to our servers. Uh, it's rendered out the um, <laughs> the LaTeX. And it says now appearing over here, and we can we can adjust this. If I use the mouse, it would be better. There we go. Um, it's now appeared here, so you can, as you type over here, it's appearing and updating over here. And this is the final output that you can um, that you will get if you if you click this PDF button up here. That will give you the output PDF. Um, so yeah, that's kind of 
This is what we call our rich text mode. So it's much more familiar if you're if you know uh, Word or Google Docs or something like that. That's sort of um, the what you would uh, expect. But we also have what it's relying on is this underneath, which is our source LaTeX. So for the people who are familiar with LaTeX, you get the full power of LaTeX and um, all of the bits of LaTeX. And so uh, just to explain for those who don't know LaTeX, um, you can do some powerful things with LaTeX, like much, much better support of um, mathematical symbols and um, bits and pieces like that. So it's basically we aim to the, the whole purpose of LaTeX was for writing scientific papers. So it tends to, the output of LaTeX tends to look a lot more like a scientific paper than if you use uh, Word or Google Docs or something like that. It's, um, it's obvious, you know, that it's a scientific paper. Um, and as uh, Vili talked about, we um, do a lot of um, sharing and collaboration on Overleaf. And so if you're uh, using the share modal up here, this at the moment, by default, it's a what we call a private project, which means that only people with the link can find it and that they're all like uh, somewhat difficult to find. You can't guess the link, that's my point. But because we're on a pro account at the moment, uh, we can click this, make it a protected project. And now this, this project will only be accessible to pe myself and people if I invite myself here, now I'll be sent an, an email inviting me onto this project, and then I can um, collaborate with Billy on this project. Um, the other thing is, is that uh, we have a Git integration. So, if uh, are there many people who know Git? Um, yeah. So, if you know Git, then it's basically uh, a method for collaborating with others and uh, version control, like controlling how changes are made. Um, so it allows us to do offline support with uh, Overleaf, so you can sync down your project, work on it locally, and then say if you're on an airplane or something like that, and you can sync it back up, that sort of thing. So that's our Git integration. Um, actually, I'm going to just quickly make this unlisted again. Um, we also have read-only links, so if you want to share your project um, just to others who won't be able to edit it, you can uh, copy paste this link and send them over. Um, and obviously you can share this link here um, if you want your collaborators to be able to edit as well. Um, so yeah, that's the, the share modal. Um, but he also mentioned our version control. And so I've only got one, I can create a new version here. Uh, just call it something, Cambridge, whatever. And uh, that'll be a, a new version there, which will save the current, sort of a snapshot of the current project. But I can also click this um, compare button, and that will compare the state of the current project against um, how it was when I first created it. And so that should, and you can see here that this, this line here, so it's saying I um, removed the abstract um, thing in there and inserted um, Hello Cambridge instead. And I can go through it and I can check all the revisions that were made to this document uh, to, between the, two, the current version and the previous version. Um, we also have uh, a full project history. This is going to be a little bit empty at the moment because it's a brand new document. But this will, on uh, larger projects, this is extremely helpful because it will go, th go through and show you every, every change ever made. Uh, with, with this view here, this is sort of like you have to save specific snapshots. So if you want to just see incremental changes, um, this, again, it looks a bit like uh, Git or <coughs> GitHub if you're used to using that. Um, and you can step through every change, and this will actually go infinitely back in time um, to the beginning of the project. And you can also download, um, if you want to restore that state, um, and we have download buttons here, or you can just click to view the source and then copy paste out of there. Um, we are working in the future to be able to make this a bit more user friendly, where you could just click a button and hopefully it will restore. Well, it will restore all of that as well. 
So that's our um, history service. Um, yeah, I think nothing there. Um, if we open the project model, modal, um, we can also see the um, the files in this project, and I can upload files from here as well. So if I have um, fig figures or data or things that I want to upload to the project, I can do it through there. Or I can add a bibliography, um, and we support integrations with Mendeley and uh, Zotero, or Z however you say it. <laughs> um, I'm not actually signed in on this account, but um, you can link up your Mendeley account and then import references um, from uh, a Mendeley group, and that will automatically be added to um, the citations. And so if I actually go in here and I'll, I can show you, if I type uh, what's the site, uh, it won't actually, oh, okay, there's a um, citation there, and that will take um, citations from this bib file. So if you're familiar with uh, LaTeX figures, so uh, bib LaTeX, which is basically a format for storing um, citations. And then I can reference my citation here. If I make this a little bit bigger, you can see now my citation has gone into there. And I believe you can configure how those are formatted as well. Um, how are we doing for time? We still have a little bit more. Um, we also talked about collaboration with um, not just other co-authors, we talked about collaboration with um, publishers as well. Um, and this is sort of more into the peer review part of Overleaf as well, because we not only support um, integrations with uh, lots of different journals, so if you wanted to um, submit to F1000 Research or PeerJ, um, or bio, bio archive was mentioned before, or archive itself. Um, we have just easy links that will automatically take the, for, uh, your project and send it over to these journals and do a submission with them. Um, but so those are the journals. But we also have various author services. Um, so um, these will um, can do copy editing and all sorts of things to help you improve the quality of your paper. Um, so that's that's the um, author services that we offer. Um, I think that's everything. You also can submit to the Overleaf Gallery. So if I open up a new tab and go to slash gallery, we have um, templates here. And since uh, CUP is um, speaking later, let's have would help if I could tell. Press. Have a look at some of their templates. Come on, there we go. So these are templates for submitting. So these are set up so that you can have the right uh, formatting for um, this political science journal. Um, I think for this astronomical uh, society journal um, and. So that will set you up automatically with all the formatting that they like um, for that particular journal. Um, I think if I, yeah, you can sort of see a better example of it there, and you would fill that out obviously with your your content there, your article. Um, I think we also um, have been working on this recently. So if I go into my settings up here, I can switch to this um, PDF output uh, preview format. And so if I save this, you can see we've been working to improve the performance of this recently. And so basically it's a much more um, clean output. Um, we're hoping to make this the default soon because it's basically just a nicer um, format on the preview. Um, so yeah, that's the, um, the PDF preview, which makes it uh, nice and clean to look at. And then finally, if I go into my account settings, um, we talked about, well, I don't think actually, uh, we talked about it this time, but uh, the last session in um, September, there's some talks from ORCID, and we've recently uh, upgraded this as well. So if you have an ORCID account, you can automatically link up your ORCID IT 
ORCID ID with um, Overly, and that will pull in that metadata when you're doing submissions to certain journals. Um, it will automatically submit your ORCID um, through that. And you can also sign in with other various services here, which is where I can link in my Mendeley account and stuff like that. I think that was everything I talk, wanted to talk about. Anybody, is there anything that I missed? I mean, if there are questions afterwards, I think there's a couple of slides. Yep, we're just going to. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. We saw that, or oh, these are things and steps that Ali um, put you through um, uh, the demo. Uh, we can just uh, mention here that the, uh, we're working with institutions, so we can provide uh, the accounts and access to Overleaf um, um, through the library to the institution or the department, but we also work with publishers, so we can streamline with their workflow. These are the numbers. There's a few integrations. This is just a snapshot of integrations we have with uh, publishers and author services, as uh, Ali showed you uh, how to integrate with Orchid. We, we saw that. Um, on the Overleaf um, site, you can find a number of resources and helper and, and tutorials as well. Um, how to use LaTeX, for example, or how to link your account, or how to link uh, with Git or work with Git. Uh, how to create plots and figures, etc., and link with free shares, or free pictures, etc. So you can find a number of tutorials on the website. Uh, we wanted to finish with um, a review that we recently reviewed by a user. Um, he was an examiner, he's in cell biology. So he was an examiner for a PhD Viva here in Cambridge recently. So he says that you usually ask students, uh, what would you do differently at the end of the exam? And uh, they usually say, I would do it much quicker, but he was surprised recently to receive a response like, I would uh, work in LaTeX. So we wanted to mention that to you. Um, I have put the link there for people who want to read the review because it uh, describes uh, the features and how everything works from his perspective so it might be informative for you as a user but we're gonna blog this as well on our website in the coming days so it will be live on our blog so you can see it. Um, and that was it from us thank you for listening for those who don't have access to overleaf yet go to the library or go to the site and uh, claim your pro account it's free and um, anything you need, you can pick up. We'll be here for the rest of the day or for the rest of the week. Um, any questions, I guess? We also have in bits and pieces over by our banner. Please take a uh, rubber duck if you would like one. We literally have <laughs> boxes this big in our office.